So Warren, tell us about how Gutterback was started and why you decided to franchise. Gutterback started because of a need we had in our plumbing business. Uh, we um, were cleaning gutters by hand. It was becoming more and more popular and common, but at the same time there was a lot of um, unfortunate uh, debris in the gutters. Uh, people were using school grounds to take drugs and throw syringes up on the roof. And, and in Bundaberg, red back spiders had moved down from north. And uh, so we were starting to find all this, this uh, debris in the gutter and dangerous stuff. That all happened around the same time as Hep B and HIV. And there was, it was, it was just an era that happened. Um, so because of that, uh, we decided we probably need to clean the gutters a better way. Um, so I, my brother, had had a chat. He'd lost his job. Um, we decided let's put together our thoughts and um, develop vacuum equipment. So we went out and looked for it and found it, found different equipment and put, put different equipment together. Um, and then we started to operate it. And he operated, he did a great job. Um, and we developed a business in Bundaberg. We then um, started to pitch it to the corporate world, uh, which is then another whole story about the safety company. Um, but uh, then we realised that it probably had some franchise opportunities. So we talked to a couple of people about that, um, and then they started us thinking that it was probably doable, um, and we had to then start on systemising the business. So that's, in a nutshell, that's how it started. So what's the difference between vacuum cleaning a gutter and cleaning a gutter by hand? Uh, substantial difference. So clearly, for the operator, it's a lot safer, it's a lot easier. Um, with, with hand cleaning, simply because of, particularly in Queensland, the amount of roofs that are metal roofs, um, and there's leading edges of metal and there's cut edges. So the damage to your hands is quite significant. Um, in other states it's tiles, so it's not quite as bad, but it can be. It depends what the tiles have been cut and what surface they've got. Um, the, when you do by hand, you can get the loose debris out. And you, you can get most of that. You want to spend enough time, you'll get it really clean. But you won't get the mud and the, 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 the sort of the wet, muddy debris that's on the bottom of the gutter out. Um, so with vacuum, obviously, uh, no hands in the gutter. You can vacuum out all the, the top layer, but you can then get in and get the, the wet, the mud and the slop. And plus, that's where you pick up the worms and the cockroaches and, and all the food debris that's you know, gathered there over the years. So why is it important for people to get their gutters clean? Well, there's lots of reasons. So if you want to look at the homeowner first, because that's the thing that affects people before they consider anything else. So for the homeowner, um, you're doing a few things. One is you're stopping your gutter from overflowing. Um, you're going to extend the life of the gutter because you're not going to have corrosion and um, rotting vegetation. Secondly, and hand in hand with that, the vegetation creates a food source for vermin. So then in most roofs, whether it's tile or tin, the vermin can get into the ceiling, they can live in there, that's their, you know, their lounge room and their rumpus room. They come back out to the kitchen um, and here's a smorgasbord of food that's there all the time. Um, and there's moisture, so they get their fluids and they get their protein, so they live on it. Rats, mice, cockroaches, beetles, they, and birds then, of course, sit on the roof and they then eat that, that small, um, the small insects and creatures that are in the gutters. Um, and then, of course, then the birds poop into the gutters and the birds have been eating seeds from the trees. So all of a sudden you get germination and we end up with gutters like forests. So that is the homeowner's main concern. There's absolutely a much more important concern that we don't really talk about enough. No one does. But uh, in most houses in Australia, it's mandatory that you have downpipes connected to, to the stormwater system, which takes the water then to creeks and riverways. Um, the, the thing is that in the gutters with the debris, that is really high in nutrient. It's so high in nutrient that when it gets down to creeks and waterways, it poisons the water and it kills all the, the young fish and, and uh, it kills the breeding ground where it's deposited. 
So it's actually environmentally extremely harmful. If you took that same material and put it in your garden, you would just grow a forest without any trouble at all. It's the best stuff to put back into the ground. So if you can imagine, before we had gutters um, or roofs, the rain would come down, it would hit the ground and soak back into the underground waterways. Um, if you had roofs without gutters, all the debris would wash back down and renew, make new nutrient for the ground. It'd be fantastic, but we don't. So the simple fact is, environmentally, it's a disaster. Um, so getting your gutters clean and actually keeping the waste and putting it back into your gardens, if you can, is the best thing you can do. So safety must be important. What do your franchisees do to ensure safety? Yeah, uh, when we started Gutterback, safety was very unimportant in the industry and on my background as plumbing, no one cared about safety in the 60s. Uh, as a matter of fact, on major jobs, they um, used to count how many people are expected to die and be injured as part of the statistic of each job, uh, major jobs, major industry jobs. Um, but in the late 60s, it started, people started to think about them, their welfare. Um, so we then were, it was made apparent to us by one of our clients, well prospective clients, oh that's fantastic, what a great industry, what are you going to do about safety? What safety? Well, you're going to have to be safe, you know. So you can't scaffold every roof because you can't afford it. So we developed some uh, reusable safety equipment, which um, is still out in the marketplace today, so it's been quite successful. And we actually pioneered a whole industry of roof safety. And there's plenty of companies that ripped us off and copied what we've done. And, you know, I'm sure they feel good about it. Major companies, that is. Um, but um, we, we've developed this equipment. We then became an RTO. So we became uh, qualified and certified to do a training course to give our franchisees that qualification. Um, so every franchise that comes through here is put through a a nationally accredited working height course. They're issued with safety equipment, they're shown how to use it, um, and they're encouraged to be safe at a very high level. So do the franchisees work just on residential houses? Absolutely not. Uh, it's a, there's a swing happening in our business. Um, years ago we were 70% residential, 30 domestic, uh, sorry, 70% domestic, 30% commercial. We would now be the opposite. We would be 70% commercial, 30% domestic. The reason for that is that the commercial clients want a, a good safety regime. They want professionalism, they want right paperwork, they want the correct insurance. They want everything done professionally and that's something that Gutterback prides itself on. So we've, we've always maintained that high level. Um, why do you see franchising as a good way to be in or get started in business? Well, there's another video out there about bungee jumping, um, so I won't go through all of that. I just think um, uh, if you come back and ask that question in 30 years' time, just about all private enterprise will be franchised. It's the best way to do business. There's systems in place, there's discipline, and discipline's a very important word um, in any business. And, and the systems are tried and tested so that somebody that comes into franchising has a very real chance of being successful. If they choose to follow the system, if they choose to be motivated and listen to the advice they're getting, they will be successful. Um, the people that are in franchising that don't succeed, they've either bought a brand that's terrible and they should never have been involved in it, and there are some of those, um, or they're choosing to change the system once they're in. Well, you know, why buy a Holden car and put a Ford motor in it? I mean, it just makes no sense. Get into the system, follow it, you've got a pretty good chance. So what makes a great franchisee? Somebody who follows the system. Um, somebody that, that embraces the system, wants to work with the franchisors so that not only do they follow the system and, and get the rewards from it, but they assist the franchisor in... in um, in moulding the, the model to make it even better. Uh, most of our improvements and innovations in our business over the last 20 years have come from franchisees. We've had some great ideas, but most of the ideas are prompted from franchisees. So they're part of the, they're part of the development. They're part of the solution. That's the answer. You mentioned that you've got a 
You've seen substantial growth in the Gutterback franchisees' businesses in the last five years. Why do you think that's happened? Oh, it's a great brand. It's a great model. Um, and our franchisees are successful. Um, every franchise model, every franchise brand has got some franchisees that are not successful. That's just unfortunate. Um, and I don't care whether you go to the very top brands or the very bottom brand. That happens. But the majority of our franchisees are successful. Um, some are successful to the level they want and some are successful to the level I want. Um, some of them are just remarkable. And, um, and they're, they're a great example of what Australians are capable of when they apply themselves to a great discipline and a good system. So Warren, you're 20 years in now. Mm. So where do you see franchising in 20 years from now? Oh, I just see it as, as the major employer in Australia. There's, there, I just don't think there's any option to that. Um, you've just got to look at the failure rate in the private sector um, or outside franchising and have a look at the success in franchising and how it's grown. There's no choice. If, if you're not in franchising in 20 years' time, you'll be working for somebody. You'll have a job. Well, thanks for your time, Warren. Anything else to add? I love franchising. <laughs> thanks so much. You're welcome.